officers, sir. Spanish colours, captain among them. Inform Captain Pelly, Mr. Hornblow. Aye, aye, sir. Side boys! Motions, mates! Drummers! Man the side! A captain, you say? Full dress uniform, sir. I feel the worst, Mr. Hornblow. Captain Foster, you'll see Gibraltar and the dreadnought before midday. Oh, before time, Commander. Before time. Allies, thank God, a Spanish frigate. The Spanish. Never trust the Spanish, Commander Morris. Still well clever, Master Frigate! Capitan Pelio? Oui. Si. How's your Spanish, Hornblower? Not good, sir. <clears throat> then he'll surely understand French. Ask him below for a glass of wine. Le Capitan sera honoré par votre compagnie dans un verre de vin, comme une expression d'amitié. Informez, s'il vous plaît, votre honorable capitaine, que je dois décliner son aimable invitation. J'agis en qualité d'envoyé de du duc de Belchite. Et je dois insister que la lettre soit ouverte immédiatement. He declines the officer and says that the letter is from the duke of Belchite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He insists you open it at once. Oh, does he? Huh. Does he indeed? <clears throat> yeah. uh -huh. I suppose this means that the... Uh... Spanish have made peace with France. They want us to heave too. I don't like the smell of this. Lots of such a master figures! Aye. We might be able to outrun her to Windward. I'd run her in mad to be honest in minutes. His Excellency, the Duke of Belchite, Grandee of the First Class, Commander in Chief of His Catholic Majesty's forces by land and by sea, Knight of the Most Sacred Order of the Golden Fleece. First Minister of His Most Catholic Majesty, Captain General of Andalusia. Yes, all right, all right, Mr. Hornblow. I think we've quite established our friend the Duke's eminence. What else does it say? Hold your last master figures! We may outrun them yet. Belay that order! She blows out of the water when we must turn and defend ourselves. Let her go off! I am in command of this vessel, sir! And I am of superior rank and I assume command of this vessel. Hide up on the hill! We're outmanned and outgunned. This is sheer madness. D'ici six heures. Si vous êtes toujours à la portée des batteries là-bas à Pontales, il leur sera donné l'ordre d'ouvrir le feu. What? What does he say? Um, according to the rules of neutrality, we have six hours before the Spanish start firing on us, sir. You tell him, sir. Gun before I let him see he's made me angry. We must surrender before it's too late! Hold your course! You tell him, sir. You know the kind of thing I once said, don't you, Hornblower? Yes, sir. Oui. Le Capitaine regrette beaucoup les circonstances qui vous séparent de lui. Et il espère toujours avoir le plaisir uh, de votre amitié personnelle, quelle que soit la relation entre deux, nos deux pays. <laughs> Get him over the side. With dignity. Mr. Bowles, I want to be underway within the hour, please.
change, Mr. Hornblower. Sir? How quickly friends become enemies in the teeth of war. Enemies, sir? The Duke said they were to be neutral. A meaningless word. A short step from there into bed with France. I foresee a day when the whole of Europe will be arrayed against us. We will prevail, sir. They say we have God on our side. Really? Then let us pray the Almighty never chooses to become neutral. Where's the frigate? Where's the frigate? Answer me! Kill us all! Anybody else? Anybody else? Ah! Package in the water to larboard, sir! Captain, Mr. Cleveland. Aye, aye, sir. Poor devils. Looks like one of ours. Supply ship, sir. Must have been returning to Gibraltar. The work of a neutral power, Mr. Hornblower. Spanish, sir. That will be an act of war. I expected nothing less. Over there, sir. Survivors. Let me see. Goodness gracious. Unless my eye deceives me. Yes, we have an honored guest. Sir? Captain Foster, I believe. Dreadnought Foster, sir. I do not care for such overblown titles, Mr. Hornblower. Yes. Mr. Bolts, bring us up to windward of them. My uh, Captain. Man graters! Stand by to luff up! Oh, You're all right now, eh? That's it. There you go. Come on, then. Captain Foster. God bless you, Captain Pell. Welcome aboard, sir. I congratulate you on your impeccable timing, sir. An honour to be of service, as ever. Forgive me if I forgo the usual pleasantries, Captain, till I have uh, discovered my limbs. Of course. The horn blower. Have quarters prepared for the captain here, and pass word on to my servant to find him some old clothing of mine. Aye, aye, sir. I would welcome your presence at dinner in my quarters, Captain. Well, I shall be honoured to attend, sir. Pass word on to the other officers, Hornblower. Yes, sir. I'll get that off me, man. Take me to the rum. I fear our captain is not planning the monks our guest admirers, Mr. Hornblower. But the man is a legend. Indeed. But there are some who might consider his methods reckless. Well, I was merely a passenger on the schooner on my way to Gibraltar to resume command of the Dreadnought when this, this Spanish frigate blocked our path. We were outmanned and outgunned and should we have run? We should certainly have been outpaced. Oh, did they fire without warning, sir? Oh, they had the decency to fire a warning shot. The audacity of them. Three supply ships taken by the French in as many weeks. And now the Spanish think they can do the same. Well, this was one ship they would never take. So. I assumed command of the schooner, gave the order we should attempt to rake her. Now, of course, I knew our chances were slim, but I took comfort from the fact that they'd be forced to destroy their prize. And had I not acted, the schooner and her supplies would at this very moment be in the hands of the Spanish. 
What of the crew? You have a question, Captain. I was merely wondering, how many of the crew did the Spanish take from the sea? I have no idea. At the time, my mind was engaged in more important matters than arithmetic. Am I to presume, Captain Pelu, that you would have surrendered? This is neither the time or the place, sir, to discuss tactics. Nonsense. We're all men of the sea here. You. Yes, sir. How would you have reacted in such circumstances? I think perhaps... Come on, man. Out with it. I am... I am pleased the Spanish have been deprived of our supply, sir. No. I take my leave, sir. I fancy you shall go far, young man. I fancy you shall. Al Jassiris. Sir? A cruel hand dealt by the Almighty to set a Spanish anchorage six miles off Gibraltar, don't you think? Report, if you please. Eight ships, I think, sir. Nine, with their yards crossed. Thank you. Captain Pelu, sir. I believe I might have offended you earlier. Yes, Mr. Hornblower? Might I offer my apologies, sir? Your apology is noted. Thank you, sir. When we next meet, I believe you will have your commission, sir. Sir? Well, I presume you're putting yourself forward for examination for lieutenant. That is my captain's decision, sir. The port admiral awaits. You're much taken with our famous Captain Foster. And he with you. He's a truly great man, sir. To be half the man that he is would see my life fulfilled. Careful, Mr. Hornblower. Such greatness always has its price. Come. You wish to see me, sir? Ah, oh, Mr. Hornblower. Yes, I hope you considered this good news. You're ready to take your examination for Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Good. Then I shall put you forward for next month's round. I would be honoured, sir. Should you do well, you will already have two months' seniority. Do badly, and it's back with the midshipman for six months at least. I understand that, sir. Good. Well, you'd better spend your spare time in study. Yes, sir. You're on a run, Mr Bowles. I do believe your hands are tied, Mr Bracegirdle. No prisons held me yet, sir. Yes! Oh. <laughs> Your throw, sir. The tables are turning. Taking me at my word, Mr. Hornblower. 
But could we not find a place to study below decks? No, sir. I was searching for some peace and quiet. Ah, oh, yes, of course. <clears throat> I apologise for disturbing you. No, sir. I, I didn't mean... As you were, Mr Hornblower. Yes, you'll find time to study when these high spirits are dulled. What was that, sir? Captain Foster's recent engagement with our Spanish friends has deprived the fleet of its regular supplies, leaving me no alternative but to cut the rations by half. Ah, sir. Indeed, Mr. Hornblower. No doubt Captain Foster will be forced to follow a similar prudent path. Yes, sir. Side of beef and a gallon of rum, if you please. Sounds like you've been at the rum already. <coughs> What's this? Half rations. Captain's orders. On account, Bunting, there's been no supply ship for seven weeks. And what of the captain? Is he on half rations? It's dangerous talk, Bunting. Better bite your tongue to save him. Styles. Aldroid. Uh, Finch. And that should just leave Bunting and me. What we are about to receive, let us thank the good Captain Pellew. Cleveland. Yes, sir. See if you can't put an end to that infernal racket. Aye, aye, sir. The Nightingales are in full voice tonight, are they not? Yes, sir. I miss the hornblower. There's little time for birdsong. It is a clear and cloudless night and the wind was heavy and strong. And we have played in Gibraltar Bay for many a day too long. This is one piece for the new men. We've only half. I said you men! Acting Lieutenant Hornblower requests a little less gusto in the chorus, if you please. Biscuits, one piece, pudding, none, and salt beef, only half. A Russian from the plate of an Russian's only love. Ha ha, he he, ha ha! Yes! The British man of war lies in Gibraltar Bay. And the jolly jacks of order wish that they could have... A moment, Mr. Hornblower. Sir? You sent a message to quiet the men. I merely wish to concentrate on my studies, sir. Something preying on your mind? I fear there's too much to learn. I can't help but question my readiness. As I remember my examination, like you, I spent weeks with my nose in a book. I was fortunate to be tested on a subject I knew well. But it's after the examination that the real test begins. Sir? Well, a book can teach you how to steer a ship. But it can never show you how to manage a starving crew. The men are afraid, Horatio. Many have seen before the effects of prolonged rationing. They fear a future of disease and death. But why are they singing? Well, give them the choice between singing and weeping. Which would you fancy? A good lieutenant gets to know the ways of his men. If you wish to test your readiness, begin there. My lungs just caught the wind. Pull me out. <coughs> I can't take your ration. 
you need him more than me. Some grub, I reckon. Take him to the sick bath. Come on, come on. Careful. We sit around doing nothing while the Spanish pick off our ships. At your ease there, Mr. Hornblow. We should be out there following Captain Foster's example. Captain Foster failed, as I remember it. Better to try and fail than to sit in rotten disease and starvation. I believe you have overstepped the mark, Mr. Hornblow. I apologize, sir. Well, Finch, you seem to have landed yourself a comfortable position. How soon before we're home? Home. Mr. Hombler. Yes, that's right. At your ease, man, at your ease. It's the old muscles is letting me down a bit, sir. How long have I been here? A few days now. Well, it seems... Damn fever. I can't rightly remember. You'll make it through. How long now till Portsmouth? Not long now. Reckon it's getting worse, sir. Seems confused. Fever, sir. I've been trying to keep him going, keep him awake and thinking. But he just drifts off. I don't know that you'll make it. your reading, Finch? Reading, sir. Can you read? Finch. Aye, sir. Can you read? I can read the Bible, sir. Here. Clark's Complete Handbook of Seamanship. That's mighty kind of you, sir. I'm sure. I'll enjoy it very much. No, 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 you don't understand. I want you to test me. Test you, sir? I might have my examination for lieutenant coming shortly. But I need someone to test my knowledge. I'd be honoured if you'd help me. Come on, man. Clear your mind. Ask me a question. Question, sir? I want you to test me. Come on, think. I reckon I don't need no book to test you, sir. Right then, give me your best. Supply ship. Supply ship coming in. Pass the word, Mr. Cleveland. Aye, aye, sir. A supply ship! 
I'm surprised it's been sorted. Easy there. Where's the fire? Sorry, sir. But it's a supply ship. Spread the word, Mr. Cleveland. Aye, aye, sir. A supply ship. A supply ship's been sighted. A supply ship. A supply ship's been sighted. A supply ship. A supply ship's on its way. The fisherman's bend, you see. Finch. Yes, sir. How do you tie a fisherman's bend? Fisherman's bend. How is he, sir? I can't keep him awake. Perhaps this will. There's a supply ship being sighted. You hear that? Finch! Sight, Mr. Hornblower. Indeed, sir. <laughs> What's that light, Mr. Bracegirdle? Looks like a flame, sir. What is it? A fire ship, sir. Fire ship? A Spanish fire ship. What about the guard ship, sir? Too far astern. She's gone, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bracegirdle. Get these men below decks. Mr. Harris, get them below. It's the first time I've seen the Spanish use a fire ship. Perhaps they take their example from us. The student outstrips the master, eh? Gather round now, gentlemen. Dig in your pockets, dig deeply. Generosity for the dead man's widow. Give me a start. A penny. For the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, gentlemen, this is serious. We've got a good sturdy pipe here. Who will offer me fivepence? Ten shillings for the lot. Week's pay, are you sure, man? Day, Matthews. He was a fine man, sir. And as such, he will be remembered. Yes, sir. This uh, fellow Bunting seems to be taking it bad. 
Yes, sir. They were mates on another ship when Bunting was first pressed. The way I heard it, Finch helped him to settle down. I see. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, sir. We are to accompany the transport brig Caroline on a supplies mission to Iran. My compliments to the master. Please inform Mr. Bowles to ready the ship for sale. Aye, aye sir. Oh, uh, we are to be joined by a Mr. Tapling of the diplomatic service, who will conduct negotiations. Uh, see to it he's comfortable. <laughs> Swing him in board and load away. Careful. Steady with those ropes. Steady, man. Welcome aboard, sir. Welcome aboard? I've never been so mishandled in my entire life. Do you know who I am, sir? Mr. Tapling, sir, of the diplomatic service. Well, at least that's something. Mr. Hornblower, get that raffle cleared away immediately. Aye, aye, sir. Well, help me. their own secret store of supplies. Who told you that? Dine like kings. Away with you, man. True's on press, dear. That's why we're on half rations to keep them in the kingly ways. If it weren't for the officers, we'd be on two-thirds at least. Bunting! Mr Hornblower, sir! A word. Sorry, sir. Didn't mean no harm. Just idle talk is all. Idle talk will get you hanged, man. What if I'd been the captain? And where did he hear such stories? Just men talking, sir. Talking in general. Can't rightly remember where. Very convenient. Do you require assistance, Mr Hornblower? No, sir. I will do this. These are uh, stories. Do you take them to be true? No, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I was out of place in what I said. Indeed you were. I understand that Finch was a close friend. I owed him much, sir. I, too, was in his debt. And that is why you're not already in irons. But you must understand there can be no excuse for mutinous talk. Yes, sir. I shall be watching the men closely. If morale sinks, I'll know who to blame. Return to your work. You can take what's ours. <coughs> steal it, you mean? How can you steal something that rightfully belongs to you? You're talking mutiny, Bunting. And what if I am? How else can we put a stop to this injustice? I won't be party to this sort of talk. Nor I. Come on. All right. You think differently when you're spitting out teeth. Mr. Hornblower, a word if you please. My quarters are entirely unacceptable. They are the best we have to offer, sir. They smell of sweat. And worse. See to it that I am moved immediately. Thank you.
sure he's in the hole. Bunting! What the hell do you think you're I'm doing? Hungry! I'm hungry! <laughs> what kind of man are you? Steal food from his shipmates' bellies. Have you no shame? I despair, I really do. Very well. We must follow example with example, Mr. Hornblower. Let the crew show their disgust for this creature. Sir? The gauntlet, Mr. Hornblower. Please, sir, it was a moment's madness. Quiet! The punishment shall fit the crime. If I may interject, sir, I should bear the responsibility for Bunting's actions. You? I earlier overheard him doting the crew with rumours and lies. I should have dealt with him more firmly. Very well, Mr Hornblower. You shall make your amends by leading him yourself through the gauntlet. from each and every one of you. Make sure you teach him his lesson. Any man going easy on him will be implicated in the theft. Get me on, Mr. Hornblower. lesson is well taken. From this day forth, the next man stealing food from the hole shall hang from the yard up. Mr. Hornblower, about these new quarters,
Well, it's a pretty sight from here. But a closer inspection will show that the eye is deceived. Sir? You'll soon regret volunteering, Mr. Hornblower. I doubt that, sir. Right, sir, lay alongside the jetty there, would you? Very good, sir. One and two, steady. Lay in your oars. Toss your oars. What do you do now, sir? We wait. Our presence has been noted. Steady. Bring that sail so that it gives us some shade, Matthews. Aye, aye, sir. What the fight? Go <coughs> 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 here, man! Have you lost all sense, man? Theft and now desertion, are you determined to hang? The captain will decide your fate. Secure him in the boat. Will I live with injustice? Wait! If he makes another sound, gag him. Aye, aye, sir. Bring him aboard. I fancy he would be at home here amongst the heathen. Oh no, look at that. Looks like a man who's taking a drink, sir. Muslims don't drink style. It's illegal, unlawful, and impossible to obtain. He's managed somehow, sir. His Majesty's Consul, I believe. Your servant, Mr. Juras. May I present Acting Lieutenant Horatio Hornblower of the Frigate Indefatigable. May I introduce the treasurer of his highness here to fetch the gold? The gold, sir, is there in the stern sheets of the longboat. You will have a closer view of it when we have a closer view of the stores. Ariban Hana, Amakasan. Harajan Mawaja! Now the gold. Mr. Hornblower. Very good, sir. Bring up the gold, Matthew. Come on. Welcome. Very good, Effendi. Are you unwell, sir? This infernal heat! 
Sir, what, what's happening here? <laughs> What is it, sir? It's the plague horn. It's the Black Death. I must report this to the ship. The fleet won't have us back. Not until we've served three weeks of quarantine. Now that is three weeks after the last case has occurred. We shall have to stay here in Iran. Nonsense. No one would order that. Have you seen an epidemic in the fleet? Have you seen nine out of ten men die of putrid fevers? Mr. Hornblower, I have. I have seen the plague in Smyrna in 86. Now no captain would run that risk for a crew of 20 men. We have been here for hours. We have been close to that. To him, to hear him speak, to catch his breath. Control yourself, Mr. Tapling. Which of us will be first? Bite your tongue for the sake of the men. And there is the fleet. Those supplies would have been a godsend. Damn it, we can do something about it. What is it? I must speak to the captain. Come aboard and speak to him then. What's going on? Please tell the captain I must speak to him. It's Hornblot. Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. The Black Death is at Iran. It could only have struck today, sir. Then they are already dead. Sir. Enough of that! Keep the lured, Mr. Hornblower. Aye, aye, sir. I have a suggestion, sir. Yes, what is it? The fleet needs a supply, sir. We could serve our three weeks at sea on the Catiline to preserve them. Waste of time, sir. One moment, Mr. Hornblower. You have something to say. Like as not, they'll all be dead in a week and you'll lose the Caroline. True, but I must weigh that fact against the chance of supplies, Mr. Bracegirdle, and at this moment that is of far greater importance to this fleet. Very well, I appoint you in command of the Caroline. Thank you, sir. Where's Mr. Tapling? He's ashore, sir, with the Marines. Good. He may continue as your passenger. Very good, sir. And, sir? Hmm? Yes, what now? My book, sir. Books? For my examination, sir. Yes? Right, um, see to it. I hope... I hope you find time to study them. Thank you, sir. It's like the blooming Noah's Ark, sir. Noah's animals walked in two by two, Matthews. We're not so lucky. And we have to get the grain on board first. Now rig those tackles there. Aye, aye, sir. Rig tackle! Mama 
Capstone and get us underway, if you please, Mr. Bowles. Aye, aye, sir. And the Capstone! Good luck, Mr. Hoblard! Report in three weeks at Gibraltar! Very good, sir! Thank you, sir! <laughs> Beg pardon, sir. Can't you hear those cattle bellowing? It's terrible hot. I need water. Ah, hell. We'll never be able to get them on board before nightfall. Very well, sirs. Take some men from the loader and get the water set up. Ah, I come. That's enough. We'll start afresh on the morrow. Aye, sir. Well done, men. Thank you for your efforts. Is this what you had in mind when you made your bid for freedom? Please, spare me the wise words. You're short of crew, and you need my help, sir. It's you who needs my help, Bunting. You have a choice. You can lie here and rot until we reach Gibraltar, at which time you will answer for your crimes, we'll never see or Gibraltar. you can return to your duties. In which case, I might be prepared to speak for you at your trial. Why would you speak for me? Each of us can find a maggot in our past, which will happily devour our futures. I give you the chance to reclaim yours. What if there is no future to reclaim? Then pray that death is swift. Wait! I spoke in haste. Sir, are you prepared to work? Yes, sir. Cross me, Bunting, and you will regret it. He refuses to rise from his bunk, sir. Does he indeed? Good morrow, Mr. Tapling. When can we expect your presence above decks? Never. There is no point. The Moors have come to fetch their gold. The Moors? Don't let them aboard. Set sail at once. The gold is theirs by right. I will not see them. Send one of the men. I need my men, Mr. Tapling. I have pains in my body. I cannot move. The hand of death is upon me. In that case, you shall have no need for rations. 
You would withhold rations from a dying man? I would consider it my duty to help speed your release from this world, sir. The Admiral will hear of this. Last one, men. What's that smell, Matthews? What? Oh, it's the cattle, sir. They haven't got the sense to get the rear ends over the side. We'll get some men on it. Aye, aye, sir. Not a job for volunteers, sir. No. But at least they're busy. It takes their mind off other matters. There's truth in that, sir. We'd best get out to sea away from this infernal wind. Get that foresail bent on, and then send the hands to station for weighing anchor. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Style. Foresail. Fire wind out. Problem, Mr. Tapling? Did you give orders that I should be assigned cook's mate? Are you a carpenter? What? Or a surgeon? Are you qualified for that? Oh, now look here. We have no need for a wordsmith on this voyage, Mr. Tapling. We're short on crew and each must pull his weight. But cook's mate, I am not bred for such a task. If you can show me a job for which you are better qualified, I'll consider it. Beat a path close up to the Straits, Matthews. Lest this westerly in the current takes us out of reach of Gibraltar. Aye, aye, Captain. She's not cut out for this kind of work. Let's hope she hangs together. And slaughter a bullock for the men. A bullock, sir? Yeah? Each meal might be our last. Let's ensure it's a feast. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. This is, without question, the most revolting experience of my entire life. Has its advantages, sir? None that I can see. The man with a hatchet gets to pick the choicest cuts. Indeed. Show me. Let us pray. We live in quarantine for the rest of our lives. Does it taste as you remember? Mm. Oh, there's a certain satisfaction in seeing one's efforts appreciated. Not half as satisfying as a nice bit of fillet.
Oh, for heaven's sake. What do you want? It's happened. What's happened? Talk sense, man. The plague. Hold on. No, keep away. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Back, get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get him off the side. Get him off the side. I've got it. Right, right now. Get him off the side. 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 I warned you, Hornblower! I warned you this would happen! We're all dead! Control yourself, if you please, Mr. Tapling! Straighten yourself up, man. Put him where he belongs, in the hole with the rest of the stinking beasts. The man is drunk! No. <laughs> Very noble of you, Mr. Hornbower, I'm sure. What? To risk your life so. There was no risk, Mr. Tapley. If the man had been carrying the plague, we were all done for anyway. Animals are thirsty again, sir. Then water them. Aye, aye, sir. Trouble is, sir. We have but three days' water left. Three days? We're still a week to serve at the quarantine. Cattle. Thirsty brood, sir. Very well. When the wind picks up, we'll stand into the coast and look for a stream in a quiet spot. Aye, aye, sir. Small town, about half a mile inland, sir. Despite a few guards, but there's nothing going to worry. They must have followed you. Over there! Fire! Ah! Bunting! Take charge here, Matthew! Hi, Isaac! Get out! I will kill you. Then why did you save me? To hang? You will return to Gibraltar to stand trial. Stand still! Better the speed of the bullet than the slow agony of the rope. If you have your heart set on dying, I will oblige. Then do it. And I will be forever in your debt.
My duty is clear. Your duty? To save a man so that he may be killed more slowly. You will return with me to the ship. Never! I believe your duty is fulfilled, sir. Three killed, two fled, sir. Very good, Matthews. What of Bunting, sir? We'll take him aboard, bury him at sea. Aye, aye, sir. The man was beyond saving, sir. I should have found a way. God's name? The Dreadnought, I believe, sir. What the hell is that boat doing? They've got a couple of sides of beef in there, sir. Quick, after her. Boats go! to the supply. Indeed. And by whose judgment, sir? We are a plague ship, sir. I'm aware of that, Mr. Hornblower, but your quarantine's almost over. I'm sure you can spare me a few head of cattle. The quarantine has a week to run, sir. We cannot be certain we are clear. The cattle must be returned to my ship, and these hands should accompany them. Now, surely you can give me these two scrawny beasts, Mr. Hornblower. My duty is to see that the fleet is protected from the Black Death, sir. And what about your duty to a superior officer, sir? I know my duty, sir. And it also lies with the lives of the men. I will not barter with you, Mr. Hornblower. You will surrender your supplies, or I shall take them by force if necessary. Then the supplies are yours, sir. And the responsibility is yours also. Pull for the Caroline. I will see you in Gibraltar, Mr. Hornblower. We therefore commit his body to the deep, to be turned into corruption, looking for the resurrection of the body when the sea shall give up her dead, and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, who at his coming shall change our vile body, that it may be like his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. Amen. Such a senseless waste of life. Your grief is admirable, Captain, but I fear you take it too much to heart. I killed him, Mr. Tapling. The man had long since lost his respect for life, but your courage and command of this ship will save the lives of many. I feel certain Captain Pelly would have found a solution. I fear I must question my readiness for command. <laughs> well, Captain Hornblower, a sight to gladden the heart, is it not? Indeed, Mr. Tapling. 
you served us well, sir. No, more than my fair share, and I've gained much in return. A new acquaintance with the cuts of a bullock and the worth of full bellies for the men. Such knowledge will serve me well. <clears throat> Hello, Noah. How are Shem and Ham? Shem and Ham have brought home the supper. <laughs> well done, Mr. Hobler. I regret that Mr. Bracegirdle can't say the same. Mr. Tapling has already informed me of the man bunting. You carry the weight of his death on your shoulders. A month ago. Mr. Bracegirdle bade me test my readiness for office with the men. I failed that test. Mr. Hornblower, men like Bunting choose to cast themselves adrift. You attended to your duty as an officer. I failed to find a way inside the man. Look, you have nothing to reproach yourself with. One man has died. Others may live. Thanks to you. Yes, sir, but his death was needless. That is the price of command, I'm afraid. And it doesn't do to dwell on the past. <clears throat> Besides, you have much to prepare. Sir? The examination for lieutenant takes place tomorrow at Admiralty House. I presume you still wish to present yourself? Good. Then advise Mr. Bracegirdle that I've given you permission to take away one of the ship's boats. Aye, aye, sir. That'll be all. One thing more, Mr. Hornblower. Sir? I understand you allowed your men to feast on fresh beef. In the circumstances, I thought it best. You thought it best. You thought it best, sir. Fresh beef when there were other provisions on board? Wanton extravagance. I'm surprised at you. Sorry, sir. Good to have you back on board, Mr. Hornblower. Can anyone lend me a clean white shirt? <laughs> What's so funny? You can have one of mine, man. This will never do. Yeah, I hear the steward has a flat iron. Thank you. It's not a simple request. I've got one pair of hands, and I've got better things to do with my time than iron and your neckerchief, Mr. Holden. I'll do it myself. And just give me the iron. And have a queue at my door every morning. I'll give you my spirit ration. Well, at least you won't disgrace the ship. Thank you, Mr. Racegirl. Off as soon as you can and uh, carry it under your arm. 
Maybe they won't notice. You're as ready now as you ever will be. Thank you, sir. Here it comes, lads. Three cheers for Mr. Hornblower. Hey, Frank! Lieutenant Hornblower, sir, reporting for the examination. How many of us will they pass, do you think? Five? Here they come. <laughs> it's Black Charlie Hammond, looking as if he's lost a guinea and found a sixpence. Harvey of the dockyard. No, that's not too bad. And Dreadnought Foster, no less. First young gentleman! at sea be damned. I was told to send the next man. What do they ask you? They began by asking me to define a rum line. Rum line? Well, don't keep them waiting, I advise you. You were there ten minutes. Forty of us, ten minutes each. Well, it'll be midnight before they reach the last of us. They'll never do it. If time runs out, perhaps they'll try you in batches, like the French tribunals. How did you fare? Bad luck. Next! Well, if it isn't Pello's young upstart. Well, sir, report yourself. We have no time to waste. Hornblower, sir. Her Her Horatio Hornblower, midshipman. I mean, acting lieutenant. Indefatigable. Certificates, please. Well, sit yourself down. Close hauled on the port tack, Mr. Hornblower, beating up channel with a nor'easterly wind blowing strong with Dover bearing north two miles. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Now, the wind veers four points, taking you flat aback. What do you do, sir? What do you do? 
By now, you are dismasted. Dismasted, sir. Cliffs of Dover under your lee. You're in very serious trouble, Mr. Uh, Hornblower. Are we to receive the fountain of your wisdom, Mr. Hornblower? Or did you perhaps leave your tongue on the plague ship? I, uh, dismasted, you say? Indeed. Uh, Dover. Dover Cliffs. What's going on? It's the general alarm. See? There. Sir. There, sir. A fire ship. On that. The boy's right, we should try. Pull. Pull away! Pull away, God damn you, and you may live through this! Pull! The heat is too big to border. Now lay her onto the counter. Jump for it. Let me go, sir. The indefatigable is my ship. Be my guest, Mr. Hornblower. Be my guest.
The wheels jam, sir! Yeah. Cast off the slushy. Cast it up! The hard over! Hard over! Hard over it is, sir! She's answering the helm, sir! implications, sir, but others may read implications into a simple statement of fact. I consider that an offensive remark, sir. I congratulate you on your perspicacity, sir. Would you care to withdraw your statement with an apology? I would not. Very well. We will continue this further when we reach shore. We will, sir. But I shall expect an apology from you. By God, sir, I will not stand for this. I shall have recompense in a duel at first light. I shall look forward to that with pleasure, sir. I shall send a friend to wait on you. He will be most welcome. What are you staring at, man? Nothing, sir. My life is in your <coughs> debt, Mr. Hornblower. But not for long, it would seem, sir. Huh? 
In all my years at sea, I have witnessed many an act of courage, but that, sir, must rank amongst the most memorable. My men owe you their lives, and I owe you my ship. These events will be noted in your records. Thank you, sir. Might I inquire about my examination, sir? That particular examination board may never reassemble, I fancy. Now look here, Hornblower. From what Harvey told me, you were flattered back, about to lose your spars with the Dover Cliffs under your lee. One more minute, you would have been failed. Hmm? It was a warning gun that saved you, was it not? Yes, sir. Hmm. I think in the last few weeks we've seen you face and pass a much sterner examination. Sir? I think you've tasted the bitter brew that is a captain's life. I think next time, sir, you'll be better prepared. Yes, sir. Mr. Hornblower? Sir? It has been an honour to serve with you. And with you, sir. Mr. Brace Cuddles. The officers would appreciate your attendance in a celebratory tot of rum. I shall attend presently. Something disturbs your thoughts, I fancy. Just thinking of the distances we travel. And yet how far we've still to sail as men.